starting off its third year strong. The S&P 500 trying for a record close today. Our next guest says history is on the side of the bulls in the months ahead. Let's bring in Carson Group Chief Market Strategist Ryan Dietrich. Welcome back. I think. Thank you for, thanks for having I mean, me. You, you, I feel like you're in the consensus, obviously, now, who, <laughs> among people who look at these markets and say economy good, consumers hanging in, and you're going to put rate cuts on top of that. Maybe you have animal spirits and M&A. Uh, I don't know how the election is going to come out, but, you know, as long as there's some level of gridlock, market will be all right. What do you, what do you, what do you say to that? No, you're, you're right there. You know, 18 months ago when we laid out the bullish case and no recession case, I think people thought we were crazy. They've, they've come around a little bit. But, you know, I think it's really interesting here because I love the discussion you just had. You pointed out previous guests. You know, this is a bull market, okay? This is the now we're in the third year of a bull market. I, I, my friend Sam Stovall said it like this. He said, once you get to 65 years old, the odds of getting 85 are really, really high. Bull markets work that way, Scott. Going back 50 years there's five other bull markets that made it into their third year, like this one is right now. The worst any of them went was another three years, a five-year total. The ad, the average was eight years. So listen, I'm not saying we got another six years of a bull market. But what we're saying is it's an economy that keeps surprising the upside. You know, the likelihood that this bull market is alive and well, still has a good amount of time left to it, that is uh, that's kind of how we see things playing out here. Are, are, are stocks for where they are in this bull market, though, too expensive today? And then that's going to stunt their growth in the future, as some are suggesting? Yeah, some parts of the market. I like that answer there. Because, again, I've come over all year saying small and mid caps are really cheap. Financials, industrials, kind of just right where you want them. They're not too expensive. Yes, large cap tech is still the pricey part. We're more neutral, that group. So maybe money sloshes around from that point of view. But even then, you know, the mid to late 90s, of course, that's the period we all look at. Well, valuations are nowhere near what we saw back then. And, and, and the other thing about this is when do markets usually peak? When there's over-the-top optimism. Look at the continued consumer confidence. Look at small business confidence, even PE multiples. Yes, I know they're higher than we all prefer them to be probably, but they can go a good deal higher. So we're not ignoring that. But that's, again, why we're more overweight, those cyclical areas, industrials, financials. Uh, mid caps is actually our largest overweight. And then, yes, we do have a slight overweight to small caps because those are parts of the market that are not extremely pricey. But I mean, industrials and financials, both of those sectors have been trading at, at record highs. Yeah. So they've, they've already run a lot. What do you mean they are? They've, brought, mm -hmm. they've, been, they've, they've been up a lot already. Yep. Why is there still value there then? Mm -hmm. Well, because earnings are coming in strong, I think is the short answer there, right? What do we see with this earnings season so far? It's been strong, but you're right. We've been overweight that, those two groups like all year, we're, but we're still there because the earnings are still strong. So earnings are justifying, we think in a lot of ways, the valuations that we're seeing on those particular areas. And I'm an old school John Murphy guy, right? Message of the market. I just know how those financial, those big six financial stocks reacted to earnings last Friday and Monday, right? Up almost 6% on average those two days. They said something the market clearly liked. And then we, we know, you know, so the over underlying economy continues to be strong. I mean, retail sales yesterday, yes, but I love looking at the control group way better than expected. One of the strongest numbers we've seen in a while. So the consumer is not going anywhere. Not perfect. There are cracks. I, I, we're aware of that. But still, that's a positive thing, we think, for those financials and industrials. Even if they're a tad pricey, there's still a good deal to go and earnings are still strong there.